The Bull Armory 1911 Commander, let's check it out. Bull Armory is a 1911 manufacturer out of Israel, and they have really gained a reputation for making excellent 1911s, especially for the money. Uh, today we have one of the 1911 Commander versions. This is a 4.25 inch barrel. Uh, it is in 9mm, and 9mm is now the number one caliber for 1911. It surpassed the 45 ACP. They're very easy to shoot, 10 plus 1 magazine. The hand fitting that goes into the bull uh, with the match grade bull barrel uh, make this a really excellent, accurate firearm. Uh, guys, I love 45, but I do love the lesser recoil that comes with the 9mm. It's just faster to shoot. And in full disclosure, Bull Armory did send this 1911 Commander for this review. And guys, I have heard so much about these handguns that I was really excited to get it. And we've been doing a lot of 1911 reviews lately. And this is a really exceptional 1911. The Bull Armory 1911 Commander. Uh, this is in 9mm. Again, it's all stainless steel. So it's an all steel gun. Stainless steel, brushed stainless steel finish. Uh, it's very well executed. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful gun. Again, these guys are in Israel, and they make a number of different firearms, but they've really gotten to be known for their 1911s. Let's go ahead and check to make sure the gun's unloaded. We're going to drop our 10-round magazine. You do get two, uh, and this is a Metgar magazine. But, of course, this is compatible with any of your 1911 mags. Check the chamber, and the gun's empty. Now, one of the things, and this reminds me, is that how light the, sl the uh, spring is in the slide. I mean, it is super light. It glides really nice on the frame. And it has a really nice frame to slide fit. Um, and that's part of the hand fitting that goes on with the Bull Armory 1911s. Uh, they're just really well done. And another thing is these uh, wide serrations. I mean, they're very wide, but man, they are just in the right place. They're aggressive, but yet you can feel it. Uh, and able to do press checks and again just rack that slide so you know it's got some features that are a little different than some that you see but again this is a 1911 and it's a good quality 1911 uh, we've got g10 grips very well executed i have your little thumb rest right here uh, we have a extended frame safety and uh, this is in blue the hammer which is a skeletonized commander style hammer it's also blue, and then we have our mag release, uh, which is extended just a little bit, but it works really well. It just drops those mags free. Uh, the beaver tail, very well done, of course, with the memory notch. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and just drop that hammer. Uh, even the extractor is a blued finish, and it really kind of sets off just from the all stainless. I, I really kind of like the black accents, but you know, there's some people that might like it all stainless. Uh, in fact, on the website, it shows pretty much all stainless parts except for the hammer. Uh, your mainspring housing is 25 lines per inch, and man, they are really well done. And this is an aluminum mainspring housing, which is flat. Uh, and then we have the same kind of checkering here on the front strap. Now, that is where you grip front and back strap. That's where your hands close in. The grips really don't matter that much. 
A lot of guys want texturing all through here, but really what makes the big difference is in between. And uh, it has that, of course, that 1911 feel to it. And so it's just a really nice checkering. A lot of the 1911s, though, sometimes they'll just have it smooth here or have some different type checkerings. But to me, that 25 lines per inch is really just top notch. Of course, you have your slide stop. It's also checkered along the top. Uh, now, one thing about a 1911 is they're typically not left-hand friendly. Uh, you can get the ambidextrous safety, but you can't get an ambidextrous uh, mag release. And, of course, the slide release, which isn't as important. It is only on the left side of the gun. And so, you know, it's pretty much a right-handed shooting gun. Uh, but there's a lot of guys that shoot left-handed that really love the 1911 as well. Uh, but the one thing about a 1911 is it has that 1911 grip angle, which is a very natural pointing grip. Uh, one of the things about the 1911 is that it served through World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, on into Desert Storm, all the little conflicts in between, and even in Afghanistan. So these are still currently being used today. The 1911 and 45 ACP. Now this is the 9mm, which is a lot less recoil, to be honest. It, it, the commander style length is just a shortened down 1911 to 4.25 inches or 4 and a quarter inch barrel. Uh, it does have a bull barrel, a stainless steel. It's beautiful. Uh, and then we have a full length guide rod, which makes it really smooth. And we'll take a look at that when we break the pistol down. Uh, the sights are just blacked out. Uh, they're uh, serrated here at the back to cut off glare. Blacked out front sight, and it is dovetailed in. Uh, I like the cocking shelf on the rear sight. Uh, that's going to allow you to load with one hand or, or reload with one hand. Just push this on your belt, a boot, hard surface, table, whatever. has an aluminum skeletonized trigger, and it does have an adjustment for over travel. The base plate of the magazine has an unusual shape to it and it fits right here into the slide. It's very well done. Uh, and of course, easy to pull those magazines out uh, if you have any kind of malfunction. I like a little bit of that base, the way it's kind of angled down. Now it does again have two 10 round magazines for your nine millimeter. If you get this in 45 ACP, you get two eight round magazines. It also has a black oxide finish version or you can get the brush stainless. And one of the advantages of a 1911 is that it's very safe to carry. A lot of that has to do with this back here. And this is your grip safety. Uh, and that was actually implemented because of requirements from the US military back in 1911. Uh, but this is a single action hammer fired pistol. So we take our magazine, load in our 10 rounds, pop it in, and then we're gonna pull the magazine out to demonstrate. Load in your round, and now you're ready to fire. Uh, engage your safety, and now it's in safe mode. So that trigger is not gonna break. Uh, even with the grip safety depressed. If you disengage your safety, without this grip safety depressed, there's no action. It's still locked. And so depressing the grip safety allows you to fire the gun. So it just gives you an extra added measure of safety. But the great thing about the grip safety, it's passive. You don't have to do anything but grip the pistol like you're going to shoot it to fire. And so really the only safety you need to be concerned about is the frame safety. And the way I like to carry it is cocked and locked. And that means 10 rounds in the magazine, one in the chamber, rack the slide, hammers in the rear position, put my safety on. And then this is the way I carry it. Then drop the safety and you're ready to fire. So that is just really the typical way that guys carry these that carry them for self-defense. Now let's take a look at the trigger. Go ahead and pull our hammer back. The one thing about a 1911 is that you have a straight pullback. And that's a lot different than most of your other type pistols. It gives it a really nice trigger pull. So we have a little bit of take up right here. It hits a wall. Man, that is a crisp very nice break reset right there i mean it is super fast reset pull out our trusty trigger weight gauge from brown ales two pounds 13.9 ounces two pounds 2.3 ounces man that is a really light crisp trigger pull and the weight on the bull armory commander 1911 2 pounds, 6.2 ounces. This is not a polymer frame striker fire pistol for sure.
Now there's a lot of 1911s out there, um, and there are a lot of different price ranges, a lot of different quality. Uh, you can go with the budget 1911s, a few frills, just you know your basic 1911, or you can kind of up it to the mid tier, uh, and then go on up. Guys, you can pay a lot of money for. I mean, it gets into the thousands of dollars. So what is the difference between those pistols and this one? Uh, one of the big things with this one is that it's hand fitted. Uh, and would be similar to this coming out of a custom shop of a company that builds 1911s. And one of the big things I noticed right up front was how close to the frame slide fit we have. I mean, there is no movement at all here at the back. Um, the extractor fit very well. There's no gaps, no seams. I mean, you can see where it fits in there, but it's really well done. The most important part, though, is right here at the barrel, that barrel to slide fit. And guys, there is, if any, very little perceived movement whatsoever. Uh, and the bull barrel is going to give you that tight fit up front, uh, which you would have a barrel bushing here with the traditional 1911s, but with that bull barrel, it's actually made to kind of made up with the slide. And that takes hand fitting. And then we have our full length guide rod which makes it very smooth to manipulate and when you're shooting. And these are all individually tested as well. And so that has a lot to do with the reputation that Bull Armory is coming up with because the guns are very reliable and they seem to have really tight tolerances which are gonna to lead to good accuracy. And that's really the big thing about a 1911. You should have a really good crisp trigger and, and typically with a barrel like this, you're gonna get good accuracy. We'll see how it goes when we get to the range, but I can tell you this, it's not gonna be the gun's fault. We really appreciate Fiocchi for sponsoring the ammo, all made in the USA. One of the largest suppliers of ammunition in the country, it's good stuff. We're shooting nine millimeter, 115 grain, and of course we have our, one, our 1911, which now most 1911s are made in nine millimeter. Taking the Bull Armory 1911 Commander down to the range, 9mm is just soft to shoot. Uh, you've got that all steel frame, um, you know, and then of course the ergonomics, the grip with that uh, texturing, uh, it really makes a difference when you're shooting these. Uh, if you have that smooth front strap, you know, it's not quite as locked in. And that's one of the things that this Bull Armory just made me think about. It was just solid. Uh, one thing too is with the 9mm, you know, the recoil is very low, the muzzle rise is low, and this spring, I mean, it's just so easy to pull back. And so that also adds to just a great range day. The 1911 is very pointable anyway, and of course with that natural grip angle, you just shoots. I mean, it's just a 1911. It just has some nice upgrades. The slide to frame fit just glides over those rails. The sight picture, of course, is all black, so it makes a good contrast to our target, which was white. Uh, but typically, you know, if you have a darker target, it may be a little more difficult to see those sights. But that's just an option. A lot of people are very particular about their sights, and they should be, whatever works for you. Uh, and so, you know, if you want to move to a different type sight, that's not a big deal. Now, the reliability I was curious about because a lot of times precision 1911s that are fit very well, uh, you know, can have malfunction issues. Uh, this is one of the things we found with the bull is that it just ran. We had no malfunctions whatsoever. Uh, the magazines are Metgar mags, so they should be, you know, good, reliable quality. Magazines are usually your issue with malfunctions, but couple that with the tight tolerances on this pistol, and, you know, you could have problems, but we didn't. One of the things about the bull, being a 9mm, it's so soft to shoot and the slide just comes back really easily. It's a very, just very pointable 1911. Uh, the trigger is really crisp and sweet and if you're not careful, you'll pull that trigger before you mean to. Sights coming in really nice. I like the tactical shelf. Uh, that black outline at the back, it just allows you to pick up that front sight really easily. Good sight picture. The grip. Full size. I mean, it's just got that solid grip, the checkering on the front, uh, the checkering on the mainspring housing. Uh, and then you have those palms with the grip in the middle. Again, you really hold on to the front and back. Uh, that's really where you get your grip. It's a commander, and yet it just has a really soft shooting uh, recoil impulse because of 
really that recoil system, really easy to shoot. Robbie Wheaton, when he first got this, and Robbie builds 1911s, I mean, he builds custom 1911s. Uh, he was very impressed with this pistol. Like an old friend right there. Yeah, that's nice. You can't beat that. You can't beat that. You can't beat right, that next. with a stick. I mean, I. You can't beat that really with a short stick. Now for disassembly, we went ahead and pulled our mag out. We're gonna double check to make sure it's unloaded. Uh, first thing you wanna do is to bring back your slide to slide stop position. And so lock it into this notch. Now this being a full length guide rod, there is a hole in the guide rod. And you take a small little paper clip, you find the hole, it's right there. And once I lock that into place, I'm gonna release my slide. Now I'm gonna bring it back just a little bit and you see that first notch. Take behind it and push out your slide stop. And then let the slide just go forward. Now we want to pull out our guide rod from the back. And you can see the paper clip is stuck right there. It's holding the spring under tension. And then we're going to take our barrel with this barrel link in the down position and pull it straight out of the front. Guys, this barrel is absolutely beautiful, and you can see how it kind of bevels out into that bull barrel configuration. Nice polished feed ramps. The interior, very well done. I mean, we've shot it now quite a bit, and so there's going to be a little bit of wear, which is typical. But overall, I mean, this pistol is very well finished inside and out. And that's all you need to do to field strip the pistol. Now we're going to return our barrel. We go back in through the front. And then we bring in our guide rod. And you want to make sure that these little ears right here fit against the barrel. It's just a natural fit. And you want to bring up your little barrel link. Because this little link is what you're going to put your slide stop through. Then we take the slide and put it back over the frame. And you're going to want to stop right when you get to this little notch. Now I look through here and I find that barrel link. You can typically see it. And then I take my slide stop and go ahead and put it through. Then I wanna bring it back to that same notch position. Now be careful because what you're doing is you're going against a detent right here in this plunger tube. And so you wanna get up close to it because you don't wanna scratch your frame. And just push up like that and it'll push into it. If you scratch right here, that's called an idiot scratch. <laughs> so you want to make sure you don't do that. Now we put it back into slide lock so we can remove our little takedown tool. And then we release our slide. Check to make sure. Put in our mag. Tuck our hammer. Test for function. We're good to go. The retail price on the Bull Armory Commander 1911 is around $900. Um, I've seen it a number of places down to the $750 range, which is a phenomenal price. Now, there's a number of different firearms that Bull Armory makes, and there are a number of different 1911s. Uh, they do make a polymer frame version that has 19 plus 1 in the magazine. They make a lot of competitive-oriented 1911s, race guns. And then they make, you know, down to the EDC version, and then again, down to just your basic commander and government models, both in 9mm and in 45. Now, when it comes to pros and cons, uh, you know, I really kind of looked over this pistol to see if I could find any cons. You guys like for me to find cons. <laughs> uh, honestly, uh, the fit and the finish on this pistol is where its reputation is. I mean, it is just excellent. Uh, we looked over this really well, and the, it's just really solid lockup from the slide to frame. The grips are excellent. A lot of texturing. I love the 25 lines per inch, both on the front strap and the back strap. This is metal, which is also a plus. 
a very nice high ride beaver tail with memory notch of course the commander hammer those are things that are really popular with a lot of the 1911s uh, but i do like those wider serrations on the front and the back it really allows you to grip hold and you feel like you've got a solid grip on that slide uh, and of course the spring itself in this nine millimeter is really soft to pull back which to me is a big plus as long as the gun's reliable. The sights, uh, they're blacked out, and these are made to be able to, to switch out with no problem. So one of the great things about this pistol, too, is the magazines, the grip, the holsters, uh, sights, all those things are compatible with all your 1911s. The trigger pull is fantastic. Uh, it shoots really well. You know, again, there's just not really any cons. If I want to get super picky, I could say, well, I want an all stainless and I'd like to have some of these controls in stainless, you know, or I don't like the grips or, you know, <laughs> I mean, there may be something that you don't like, but it's all a matter of preference or personal taste. Otherwise, this is an excellent gun all the way around. I mean, if you've seen a something that I should have included in here, put it down in the comments. I know you will anyway. That just kind of brings out anything that I might have missed. But I handle a lot of 1911s, and guys, this is an exceptional 1911. So guys, if you're looking for a good quality 1911, I think that the Bull Armory is going to be a great choice because you get a lot of features, uh, the hand fitting, the individually tested gun, all the different accoutrements that are on this pistol make it a real pleasure to take to the range. And then for the price, I mean, you know, retail $900, but seeing it around the $750 to $800 range makes this a very attractive firearm. And typically guns coming out of Israel are very high quality made. Uh, and that's no exception with the Bull. And also there's a number of different options in their line for whatever 1911 you're looking for. And again, we really appreciate Bull Armory for sending the 1911 Commander 9mm uh, for this review and adding it to my 1911 collection. Guys, if you don't have a 1911, they are just excellent pistols. Uh, great for the range, great for home defense, great to conceal carry. These have been proven over time and honestly, they're just legendary. Now we really appreciate Sportsman's Guide for being one of our sponsors. And they give a $20 off every $100 or more purchase using Such, no zero zero. And they have all kind of outdoor related, camping, hiking, firearms, you name it, they've got it. But one thing that I use them probably the most for is their military surplus from around the world. And if you join their buyers club, you get a better price and you get free shipping on most items. So check out Sportsman's Guide, it's a great resource. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. C model and now they're cut they've come and now they've come out with their commander version uh, no 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 manufacturer suggested pro retail is what is that eight or nine uh, the hand testing and so I was really excited when they got in touch with me and said and dad's walking around the side here to dump his trash and so I guess I'll have to stop for a second <laughs> Uh, but this is the Commander Lincoln. I'm all mixed up. I don't know what the... The Bull Armory 1911 Commander? That thing is no bull.